In preview videos, we talk about digital inputs and digital outputs that are either on or off, meaning that the pin has 5 volts or 0 volts. That's why we call it digital, because it's either high or low, 1 or 0. But there is another type of input and output called analog, that can receive or send values between 0 and 5 volts. In most Arduino boards, we don't have a real analog output, but we have something similar called pulse width modulation, or PWM, that can turn the pin on and off really quickly, so quick that it acts like an analog signal. So for practical purposes, we can say it is an analog output. For most Arduino boards, the analog write can be any value between 0 and 255. 0 means the pin is going to be off, and 255 means the pin is going to be fully on. Any value in between will have the intermediate states that, for example, in an LED will just change the brightness. So you can understand better, let's use this sketch that will write the LED with the analog signal 255, 20, and 0. This analog write is very useful when using RGB LEDs, which can create a wide range of colors using a combination of three color LEDs in one package. The RGB LED has red, green, and blue LEDs inside that, depending on the brightness of each one, can produce different colors. In this example, we can connect an RGB LED connected to pin 9, 10, and 11, so we can experiment changing the brightness on each color to see the effects on the entire LED. If all three colors are fully on, it produces white light. Keep in mind that not all pins can send this kind of signal. Each board is different, but the Arduino Uno and Arduino Nano can only send PWN signals through pins 3, 5, 6, 9, 10, and 11. It's sometimes indicated with this curly dash in some boards. Also, remember that the signal we're sending is not a real analog signal. It reacts similarly, but it's actually a digital pulse where we change the amount of time it is on or off, to create the intermediate states. We can even control the speed of motors with this signal, but we'll talk about that in later videos. Keep experimenting, and when you feel ready to move on, let's continue in the next video to learn about the serial monitor and some cool ways to use variables to change values. If you ever need to have a custom PCB for your projects, either your own design or from one downloaded from someone else, you can upload the Gerber files to PCBWave.com and they can manufacture it starting at $5 plus shipping. That makes it easier than using a generic prototype board. I hope it was helpful and see you in the next video. Bye bye.